Hey what's up guys, welcome to Arbyn Hardware. Today we'll be taking a look at the top 3 best gaming laptops under $1000 that you can pick up right now in mid 2022. With so many machines to choose from, it can be quite confusing to figure out which one to get, especially if you aren't up to date with the latest GPUs processors and so forth and perhaps more importantly what gaming performance you actually can expect so i decided to go through pretty much all laptops currently available around the one thousand dollar mark and i picked up three machines which i'm happy to recommend providing you guys with everything you need to know such as display design portability as well as gaming performance helping you figure out which laptop to pick to fit your need and budget. Now if you see anything you like, I have all laptops listed down in the video description. Now all machines mentioned are in no particular order, however, I will be leaving my personal favorite at the end of the video. With that said, let's take a look at the first laptop which comes from Gigabyte and it's called A5K1. Now currently this machine is on sale and it is now down $400, down from $1400. Let's take a greater look at the specifications and see what makes this machine worth picking up. For the CPU we find a fast and speedy 8 core 16 thread Zen 3 based Ryzen 7 5800H. An RTX 3060 with 6 gigs of VRAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD storage, as well as a super fast 15.6 inch IPS based 240 hertz display. Perfect if you're into competitive gaming. Well, let's dive a bit deeper and talk about the specifications. And for starters, the processor is brilliant. 8 cores in 2022 makes so much sense, especially if you're planning on holding on to your machine for quite a while. Let's say for example you decide you wanna perhaps start streaming while gaming or maybe you wanna do some other types of heavy CPU bound workloads. No problem with this type of processor. Now the H at the end of the processor name means that the ship is built with gaming and in intensive workload in mind and are closer to AMD's desktop processor in terms of performance. Now for the graphics card we find an RTX 3060 GPU capable of maxing out most games at 1080p but it has enough RAM to even run most of your favorite games at 1440p resolution with fairly high level of details as well and lower demanding competitive shooters such as Valorant will easily run locked at 240 fps no problem now dlss allows for even higher frame count and if you haven't touched this feature before you will be amazed how much performance you can actually get from the rtx 3060 for the display we're looking at the 1080p at 240 hertz which means that everything will look buttery smooth and crisp. The HDMI or the display port allows you to hook up the K1 to a separate display and enjoy 1440p gaming if you would like to do that. So spec wise, amazing performance. Now the case or the chassis of the laptop is built upon Gigabyte's higher end Aorus 5KB lineup and is originally built upon a design from Clevo which means that we are basically looking at some advantages like replaceable battery and very good maintenance options which once again is great if you plan on holding onto your laptop for a while. Design wise I think Gigabyte has done a terrific job keeping the chassis slim and lightweight while controlling and holding the thermals in place. The overall design doesn't scream much gaming which is a plus at least in my opinion. Moving on to laptop number 2 which is the Tough F17 from Asus. Now as the name hints this is a 17 inch laptop so slightly bigger than the average 15 inch machines which adds a bit to the overall weight and this is something worth having in mind especially if you're traveling. However the plus side is that you're getting much more screen real estate which can be a huge benefit if that's important to you. Anyway this laptop currently sits at $870 which is all time low for this particular configuration. 
So what specifications are we looking at? Well, for the CPU, we're getting a 11th gen Core i5, 1100-260H, a 6-core 12-thread CPU with a 2.6 GHz clock speed and 4.4 turbo. Now, while the 11th gen is extremely fast and snappy, it is obviously not as fast as Intel's latest 12th gen CPUs. However, for gaming, not really a problem as the graphics card plays a much bigger role in the end of the day. And speaking of the GPU, inside the Tough F17 we find an RTX 3050 Ti with 4 gigs of VRAM, which uh, yeah, mostly is enough for 1080p gaming maxed out, but it will struggle to handle 1440p. And so if you plan on ever hooking up your laptop to a let's say a separate 1440p screen, I would definitely look for a machine with at least 6 gigs of VRAM. For RAM we're getting 8 gigabytes, and this is enough to run most games. But 16 is always nice to have, especially if you like to have a lot of tasks running in the background. So yeah, all in all, not ideal for gaming while streaming at the same time, for example. Now for storage, we find a 512 gigabyte SSD. Again, this is enough, but one terabyte is always nice to have. Luckily though, Asus does offer an additional SSD the slot and the option to upgrade RAM which is nice to be aware of. For the display we find a full HD 17 inch IPS panel with 120 hertz refresh rate which yeah should be enough for most gamers out there. Overall, compared to the previous machine, slightly lower specs across the board. However, we need to have in mind that the F17 is about $130 cheaper. So yeah, that is the trade-off you essentially make. Design-wise, compared to the previous machine from Gigabyte, the Asus is slightly heavier, much because of the bigger screen. As for battery life, both comes with a 48 watt hour battery, which isn't bad, but it isn't the best either. For example, you should expect around 2 hours of web surfing with Wi Fi at 150 nits of brightness, but for gaming on the go, I would say definitely bring the power adapter. Moving on to the last laptop on the list, the GF65 from MSI. Well, this machine comes in at $830, so definitely the cheapest one on the list. So let's see how this one holds up compared to the previous two machines. For the processor, we're looking at the Core i5 10500H. This is a 6 core 12 thread processor with a 2.5 GHz base clock and 4.5 turbo. Now compared to the previous machines, this is the oldest CPU on the list. However, this isn't the end of the world, as the core count and thread count are considered to be more important when gaming. 2.5 GHz clock speed with turbo up to 4.5 is also great, so in the end of the day, pretty good CPU capable of running any game in the end of the day. For the graphics card, we find an RTX 3060 with 6 gigs of VRAM, and by now you guys have probably figured out already how this GPU performs. The 75 watt TDP which the GPU is specified for allows the GF65 to run most AAA titles with solid and smooth frame rates. For the RAM we find 8GB as well as 512GB worth of space and this is definitely on the lower side but still enough to meet recommended requirement for pretty much all games in 2022. And considering the $830 price tag, this is expected guys. Now design wise, personally, uh, not the nicest looking laptop around. However, what I do like is the thin design and footprint. It comes in at a weight of only 1.86 kilograms, making it the lightest laptop on the list. The lightweight should make it the perfect machine to bring on the go. However, because of the rather low 51 watt hour battery, definitely recommend having the power cord around you. And the battery life should last around 2 hours. In terms of screen, we find a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display at 144Hz, which makes it perfect for any type of gamer, competitive gaming included. So with all laptops now mentioned, which one do I personally recommend? Which machine offers the best overall value for your money? 
It is not the easiest question to answer, as all machines have their pros and cons. However, if I got to choose, I would pick the Gigabyte A1K5, and the reasons are several. It offers balanced specs, it has a fantastic 240Hz display, it's got great and sleek build quality. Again, spec-wise, you're getting lots of power, enough to run any game without lag or stutter. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment or join the Discord server, you'll find the link down below.